Welcome to Let's Go Car Cruising. My name's Mark and I'm a certified car nut. Tonight I'm down in Berlin, Connecticut at the Connecticut Street Rod Association's Nostalgia Night. Oh my God, what a ton of beautiful cars. I didn't know which way to turn and which way to start and where to go first. So enjoy the show. I didn't want to get into too much detail, but car was bought by by two guys in Oxford, Connecticut. They raced it, and then they sold it to two brothers in Bridgeport, Connecticut, okay. that were into drugs. They oh! Dealing, they okay. used this for drug running. Because it was fast. And outrunning the cops. Ah. Okay? <laughs> and they, they banged it up when I bought it. That fender was smashed. Okay. And I had to get a new fiberglass fender, which I found from a, to a friend. Sure. And, uh, and and restore it, but it was in bad shape. The engine was blown up, and uh, then I find out from one of the, the next owner that it was raced on the Merritt Parkway and got into some trouble there. Broke a drive shaft, went halfway over a guardrail. Oh. This car, like I said, a rough I life. It's a survivor. There it is. It, it shouldn't even be here today. That's awesome. Now I think Bob's car is a Tasca car as well. I think Bob so. Ferns, yeah. I remember yeah. the Tasca emblem on the back of it. That's cool. Yeah. So Great. I, I hope I see him again, but if you do, just... I will, I will make sure I tell, tell him. him that your other, the other lightweight guy from Connecticut said hello. I will. All right, folks, we're here with Don, and uh, Don's got a 63. 64. 64, I'm sorry. Fairlane 500. Was there much difference between the threes and the fours? Trees had a, a fin. Ah, okay. They okay. used to lift up on the high end on the tracks. Oh, so they, okay. They got rid of the fence. Yeah, there you go. That was aerodynamics at its beginnings. So uh, tell us about the car, Don. No, it's a 1964 Fairlane 500. I bought it 10 years ago. We took it all apart, put it all back together. So, so you know it, it inside out? And it was painted, and the interior was done. That we didn't have to do, but everything okay. outside of that, we had to go through. Okay, so... Uh, it's a Thunderbolt tribute? Tribute or, car. Sure, Tribute's okay. Tribute's the best word, I yeah. think, for it. And uh, it, it goes real well, I guess, huh? It goes pretty well, yeah. Uh, fiberglass hood, I can see that. Fenders and... Fenders, bumpers. And you said bumpers oh, are... All fiberglass. Fiberglass, okay. Because some of the Thunderbolt fend bumpers were aluminum. It Was was it a... You, you can't find them, and they wouldn't let you race with them, so you had to have steel on the tracks. So. Uh, okay, okay. But some were, it was, it, a part of them were fiberglass and some were aluminum, or were they all? Uh, the they To race them, they had to be all steel. Okay. But they originally came out with the um, aluminum to make them lighter. Yep. But then they decided they didn't take the impact that they wanted them to take. Yeah, that's something you want to be careful about, I would imagine. Yeah, so, uh, so what's in it for uh, for motor? It, it's a 428 Cobra Jet. Okay. But it's dressed up nice and... Uh, you get it out. I see the for sale sign. You're looking for something else? Uh, time for something Looking for or? another project. Okay. Good. I'll get a picture somewhere uh, and I'll uh, well, include that as the... front uh, of the car or...? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll do that too. Okay. Yes, whatever. Okay. Thanks for your time. All I right. appreciate it. Thank you. All right, folks. I heard this one come in and I had to run right over and uh, find the owner before he walked away and uh, I caught him. And uh, we're here with uh, Gio. And he's going to tell us uh, what do we got going on here. It is uh, what is it? Seventy five seventy two. Five seventy two yeah. Hemi. Yep. Blown injected Hemi. Blower. From a thousand. To so the a sixty nine Roadrunner. Yeah. Okay. Sixty nine Roadrunner. So how long have you had this? Uh, about a shit three years now, man. Okay. Um, yeah, it's been like a, yeah, about a three year build. Okay. Uh, the motor was built down in North Carolina. We built it like, calmly, you know. So, okay. So you can kind of sort of street drive yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
could have made like 17, 1800, but uh, we kept it quiet at a thousand. That was the <laughs> a quiet yeah, thousand. Yeah, exactly. Pardon me while I chuckle, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, street Manners, uh, it's got a gear vendor's overdrive on it. Okay. So I was just laughing with these guys. I could go to Musquamacan and shit like that. Yeah. So uh, that's what I wanted. I live down at Adam. I own a business down the street here. So, okay. Uh, I wanted it kind of. Is building cars uh, your business? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but we do do some powder coating and ceramic coating. We okay. Got some of that work on here. Good. Well, give a shout out. What's the name of the business? Liberty Coatings. Liberty Coatings. Yeah, All Liberty right. Liberty Industries is the main one. Liberty Coatings is the powder coat and ceramic coatings, like high temp exhaust stuff for uh, headers and exhaust in the car world. Awesome, man. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for taking a minute to uh, say hello and tell us about the car and. Yeah. Uh, Enjoy the hell out of it because, man, yeah, it is nasty you, cool. Yeah. I, Jeff Domenico is the builder pretty much of it. Okay. Domenico Hot Rods right down the street from me in Cromwell. But he's okay. the dude that you know, pretty much, you know, it was my idea and what we wanted. He helped and he made it come true. Uh, he's a really talented guy, him and his son. It shows. Yeah. It shows. So, uh, yeah. He did most of it. It had a mini tub on it when I got it. Okay. He basically went through the whole thing and made it a full uh, full tub and kind of got a little wild on it and uh, went from there. And, Perfect. Yeah. All right, man. Cool. Thanks. I appreciate yeah. your time and uh, enjoy the heck out no of it. Problem, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're here with Mike and uh, Mike's the builder because the owner said, talk to him. He built it. <laughs> so yeah. Mike, it's all on you. Uh, 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 the friend of mine, Bernie Durgan, is the owner of the car. Okay. It's a 73 Chevelle SS, original SS car. Okay. Uh, he, he is actually 73? the original owner. Seven, 70, I'm sorry, 71. Okay. Sorry, 71. I'm sorry. I know a little bit, but I figured it was a one or a two. So, okay. Yeah, no, hey, sorry. We're, we're good. That's all right. I don't like to correct people, but. No, that's okay. He's, <laughs> he's actually the original owner of the car. Really? Yeah. Wow. He bought the car brand new. Has all the paperwork from it from day one. Um, I did all the final assembly after the car was painted because the car was panel painted. Okay. So all the final assembly. It's got a crate LS6 motor in it. It originally Ooh. was a 402 automatic car. Sure. Originally when it was an SS brand new. Yep. Now it's got a um, an LS6 crate motor that they offered in the 80s. Yes, I remember. Because the original LS6s are closed chamber. Yep. Big port heads. This is open chamber, big port heads. So the compression ratio is around 10.5. Okay. But it's an iron head. Um, it's got a Demon 750 double pumper on it. Um, it's got headman headers. It's got an aluminum drive shaft. It's got a huge performance transmission in it, 4L60. Okay. Um, kind of helped the little overdrive, overdrive makes it drivable. Yep. Yeah. And it's got a 2500 stall converter, lockup converter. Okay. 373s in the back, but the tire in the back's 28 inches tall. Sure. So all the combination together, 65 miles an hour is 2100 RPM. Awesome. So, and the car, he drives the car to Lake George every year. So it's 225 miles from North Haven up to Lake George every year. Wow. Um, the color of the car is quasar blue. Okay. It's got pearl white stripes. If you look at it and you catch the pearl white stripes in the right light, it's got a blue flake in oh, the pearl white. all right. Um, it's got a, quite a bit of clear on the car because if you close your eyes and run your hand across the hood, you can't feel the stripes. Wow, I won't rub my hand on anything. <laughs> I don't I don't like rubbing my hand on my own car and never mind anybody else's. Uh, it's got Budnick wheels. Okay. Uh, it's got um, 17 sevens in the front. In the back, it has a 18.9. Um, okay. With a 295. 50 tire in sure. the back. Wow. So, All right. uh, that's why you get the height of the 28 inches tall. Sure. Um, three inch exhaust on it all the way back with Flowmasters. Um, it's the widest tire you can fit on the back of one of these cars, 295, without cutting the lips. None of the sheet metal's been cut. Okay. It's all original sheet metal car. So, um, do you have a shop or are you? No, I work at my house or okay. I work at his house. Okay. Or whoever owns the car. Oh, ah, the there you go. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks so, for taking the time. I appreciate it. And, uh, it caught my eye. It was like jumped out at me. It's like, ah, uh, there's somebody standing by it. I'm going to come over and talk to him. And the so. thing is, you know, like I said, you know, he drives it. He doesn't trailer it anywhere. <sighs> last year when we drove up to Lake George. That's a lot of chrome to keep clean. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it took him two weeks to clean it last year coming back from Lake George. Because yeah. we drove all the way to Lake George. After the show, he actually got a top 50 award at Lake George. Okay. And then, it's about, like I said, about 225 miles back, halfway back, it started to torrential rain. Uh -huh. So he drove it about 100 miles in the rain. So. Yeah. So and it doesn't hurt them, I get it, but, but it's just, it's it makes just, you 
so you know, much work it's so it. hard to clean, you know, right. yeah. especially with this, because the inner fender wells that are all painted, they're also painted on the bottom. Sure. And powder coated frame. Right. Got so it's up on the left. Overs in the front. Yeah. yeah. Everything's chrome in the front. Awesome. So, well, okay. thanks again. I Thank appreciate you very it. Much, Mark. Have Thank a great day. Much. Appreciate thanks. it. Take care. A little 32 five window coupe. And uh, a bit of a custom El Dorado. Nice little Studebaker pickup truck. Don't see a lot of these around. And uh, it is bright red. Oh my. Small block Chevy in it. Gotta give a little bit of love to the 59 Corvette here. Looks like a Marlboro maroon, white coves, black interior. Fun little car. Looks like an upgraded small block Chevy in it. And cool wheels. Got a lead sled here. Lots of work in that car. Down low. Oh, a little one, C1, caught my eye. 58. Pretty charcoal gray, silver cove, red interior, and the trunk spears. Try to find those. Yikes. And it's a Chevrolet two door sedan. Don't see many of them around. I ride for a family, Room for the kids in the back seat. 32 High Boy Roadster. Chevrolet Coupe. Wow, pretty clean. Whew. Nice car. Another Chevrolet. A little bit older. Forty Ford pickup. Ford Coupe. Little T Model uh, I'm sorry, probably Model A hot rod. Another one, hot rods, hot rods, and hot rods. Cool stuff, man. Wow. I don't know where to go next. Got a couple of Shelby's here. This one is a uh, GT 500 KR convertible. much to say about this folks it is as cool as it gets and next to it is a 500 kr hardtop wow beautiful 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 cars this one's gonna Roll bar in it. Amazing. Nice to see them out. You don't, uh, you don't get them out very often to see. So uh, we appreciate it. Pair of Novas here. Red one's a Yenko tribute car, and the yellow one is an SS car. 50 badges on it. Nice pair. A little Pro Street Ranger pickup. And uh, by the size of those tubs, you can guess what's uh, underneath it. Because uh, I'm too old to crawl under it and show you. But it is sweet. 427 badges. Wow. Looks like a lot of fun. So, 56 T Bird, 
Fox Body Mustang, uh, Chevrolet Coupe, Chevrolet Truck, and there is a lot of wicked cool stuff here. Uh, C3 Corvette, 67 Camaro. There, more awesome cars. The heavy Chevy. And an SS convertible. And a Ford hot rod with a Ford engine in it. How cool is that? Little Dodge Rampage pickup truck. Uh, don't see them around a lot. A couple of early Mustangs. And there is just a little bit of everything cool here, folks. 442 convertible, blue with a white interior. A little Viper over here. Wow. 69 SS. El Camino. The Corvettes and the Camaro, Ford Coupe, 55 Chevy, 57 T Bird, black, with a white top and a green interior. Isn't that cool? That's quite a combination. And 70. Pontiac Trans Am. First year of the second gen Trans Ams. White, blue interior, blue stripe. And it's got a four speed. What a mint car. Wow. 32 Ford Roadster here for sale. Nice sharp green. Basic interior. This is the car. Information on it. If you're interested. I couldn't build it for that. Sixty-eight SS Camaro. like a 67 Impala SS, big car, SS package, and a big block, that's pretty cool, and a special hood, don't see these hoods around, special bulge on it, and a vent up near the cowl. This is from the, their only original once category. 57 fuel injected Corvette. It's a fuely baby. Wow. It's cool. Just drive it. I stand corrected. It's a 68 Impala SS. Four twenty seven car. Really cool. Chevy Biscayne. Plain Jane wheels. And unless you saw that, folks, you really didn't know. Plain Jane. Talk dish up caps. Bench seat. It's got a radio, and it's got a four-speed too, so uh, it's cool. But uh, Plain Jane Street Sleeper Biscayne, love it. So we're here with Ron, and Ron is going to talk about 
it's a race car and that's about all I can tell you about looking at it. I'm very sorry, but educate me on it. What, what do we have? This is a car you run at the Bottomville Soft Flats, Wendover, Utah. Okay. You run it for three, four, or five miles and you're running for setting the the world land speed record at the Bonneville Soft Flats. Okay, so when was this car originally built? This car has been in production. We've been building this car for 15 years now. Oh, okay. Uh, my son and I and a couple of friends in the car club started out as a World War II airplane drop fuel tank, made the chassis, put the chassis inside a drop tank, and started building a car from there, and we've continued to build it. Okay, so you've run it out there. How fast have you run it at? This car has set seven land speed records out there so far. Wow. The top speed so far with a and one of our engine combinations, 225 miles an hour from a standing start to the third mile. Ooh. And that's with a 1950 Ford flathead block. That's amazing. That's, uh, yeah, no other word to describe it other than amazing. A lot of... Uh, a lot of, I was just asking you, do you have to hold your breath when you, every once in a while? And uh, yeah, it yeah, must be. You definitely do. If the wind wants to take you and you're going down course, yeah. Yeah. yeah it gets to be a hand fill, but they give you enough uh, width on the course and try to keep it between the markers and get it to that mile marker where the timers are. And if your tachometer says it's where it needs to be, you're above the record, and that's a beautiful day. It is. It's all good after that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Well, thanks for telling me about the car. Uh, again, I kind of figured Bonneville, but I didn't know, and uh, the only way to know is to ask. So I, I appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, pretty much what you're looking at, it's naked because the bodywork's not on it. Right. Right. It looks quite a bit different with the bodywork, but see the engineering and stuff. It's unusual. I decided tonight, eh, leave the bodywork home. How long does it take you to take it off? Well, it's probably about 10 minutes. Okay, yeah. That's all. Yeah. Very quick. Very quick. Ease of uh, working on it. Yeah, definitely is. Yep. I heard you talking about changing engines. Have you had to change engines? Yeah, out at Speed Week, we've changed engines over the years two times. Okay. Yeah, we have had to do that. We were able to get the backup runs, and we were able to accomplish things, but we did have to do it a couple of times. Not a fun day to do that, but we have the capabilities of accomplishing it. And we do what we need to do. You know, it's only 2,400 miles from here, so. Only? Only. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so we're there. It's you're there. You're going nice to do you're gonna do what you need to do to get yeah. the job done, right? I, try I understand, have, yeah. Try to have enough stuff with us so that we could accomplish a record. So. Awesome. Well, thanks again. I appreciate it. And uh, continued good luck and, All right, thank and you. good health with it. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Take care. So this is another 32 High Boy Roadster, folks. But uh, it's got some different stuff in it. And I'm going to focus on this right here. That is a flathead Ford with Arden, Ardun heads. And Ardun means Zora Arcus Duntoff. And he developed these head, overhead valve conversion for the flathead Fords before he became the godfather of the Corvette. So uh, those are really pretty rare. And uh, I think they're probably obscenely expensive at this point in time, but uh, they are cool. And that's what you did to a flathead Ford to go really fast back in the day. This is a small block Chevy, looks like, in a rail dragster. Man, can you imagine holding on to that thing? With differential right there between your knees. Yikes. see these out. Pretty cool. Nice little uh, Chevy ramp truck. But up on it is an early, hot, uh, early funny car. And uh, it doesn't look like there's an engine in it. But uh, get up and see what we can see here. That's what they raced. This one's a 51 Anglia. British car. Real small. Lightweight. Got a small block Chevy in it. And 
to the interior. Hold on. Being so short and small, as I imagine, a little squirrely. But again, that's what they raced back in the day. All right, folks, we're here with Jerry, and uh, Jerry's going to tell us about his uh, veteran, Veterans Garage drag race car, and I'm, that's about all I know about it. What okay. is it, Jerry? It's a 1933 Willis. Willis, okay. And they were economy cars back in 1933. Yep. And uh, the reason why they made them into um, uh, race cars for drag racing, because of the short wheelbase, and they were very, very light. Light, and short small. and light. And very with a little popular. bit of horsepower, I bet you they're a bit yeah. to hold on to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little squirrely? It'll go about 10 seconds in the quarter mile. Wow. Yeah. So uh, how long have you had this, Jerry? Um, since uh, 2010. Okay. And I bought it out of uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, and uh, we made it into a, uh, a car, um, gasser car like it, like it is. Okay. Uh, it's, it, the class was A-gas. A-gas, yep. They, they go by the weight, by the two cubic inches of the motor. Sure, okay. And that's how they ran them. So... Uh, you're an author as well. Tell us about uh, uh, tell yeah. us about your book. Yeah, uh, I was in the first draft, okay. uh, 19 years old in um, 1965. And thank you for your service. Thank you. And uh, I was going to UConn at the time. It was in my summer break, and okay. uh, and I got my draft notice. And I could have probably got a deferment, but uh, I thought it was my duty to serve my country. And, Amen. Uh, and that's what I did. So we trained up in Fort Devens, Massachusetts. Okay. Yep. We trained before we went over for 10 whole months before we went over as one unit, which wow. was a little bit rare yeah. to do at the time because most guys were replacements. But that was early. Was that early on? That was early on. That was in, uh, we trained from uh, October 65 until July of 66 okay. when we went over. 4,000 of us from Boston Harbor on two ships, the Alexander Patch and the Darby. Went through the Panama Canal, up to California, and then to Vietnam. Took us 32 days to get there. Wow. So uh, I won a contest. I didn't go on the two ships. I was a lucky guy. I studied uh, diligently, and uh, I had to know all my general orders. My uniform had to be perfect, and I had to know all the weapons, uh, chain of command, etc. Okay. And what I did, I sprayed my uniform with a whole can of um, spray starch, and it actually stood up against the wall. <laughs> so, <laughs> to the nines, but, right? Yeah. To the nines. <laughs> and uh, we were... We were I, uh, we were put on the parade field in a guard duty formation, and uh, the higher ups, I never saw colonels or, and uh, majors like that in my basic training, so okay. that was the first time. But when they asked me the questions, and lo and behold, I won uh, over um, 2,000 men in my battalion. Okay. So I got to get three day passes for a whole month while my buddies were on the troop ships. Ah. So I got to go home uh, okay. and come back every three days. And then I flew over with the officers. It was called an advanced party. So okay. we flew from uh, Edwards Air Force Base yep. in, uh, up near Boston. And we flew to uh, Alaska, stayed overnight. And then the next night to Yokota, Japan. And then um, just to refuel, we couldn't go, get off the plane. And then the, uh, August 4th of 66, I landed in Vietnam about 10 o'clock at night and stepped off the plane. And it was just like a sauna. Uh, it hit me. Yeah. That and the smell was like rancid air, and uh, they put me in a warehouse with, with bunk beds. The next morning, they put me on a C-130, sent me up to the Cambodian border with the 25th Infantry Division, and I had to wait about 10 more days for my unit to arrive. Okay. Okay, then after that, we built a Tainan base camp, which was right at the end of the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and our mission was to uh, quell the infiltrating coming down the Ho Chi Minh Trail towards Saigon, which was the capital of South Vietnam. Sure, okay. And we did that through helicopter assaults, ambush patrols, and search and destroy missions. Wow. And that's awesome. what we did. And uh, believe it or not, I had about five very close calls. Mm -hmm. And I got to come home. And uh, very fortunate. Very fortunate. Well, and then years later, awesome. I got into joining a lot of veterans groups. Yes. So I'm a chaplain of five uh, veterans organizations sure. now. So tell us the name of the book. Give, give us. The name of the book is Vietnam Beyond. Okay. by Gerald E. Augustine. Okay. And uh, It's out? They can find it on? You can get it on uh, Amazon. Amazon? Yep. Cool. But I do sell them right from my house also. And awesome. I do do book awesome. presentations. I okay. love to tell my story. Okay. The history of, of Vietnam should not be lost. Not a, it, Exactly. Not You're ab absolutely right. I agree. So I have about four different uh, events coming up. 
uh, I give great presentations of my trip back to Vietnam, which I went last December. Okay. And uh, I just love the trip. And um, the Vietnamese people love Americans now, even in, up in Hanoi. Um, the first night we were there, we were, we were invited to a, a family and uh, they cooked uh, a meal for the 21 of us. They, the little girls played piano for us. And, oh, that's uh, absolutely awesome. Absolutely love the Americans. Terrific. Yeah. Well, thanks for your story, Jerry. Sure. Thanks for your service. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. God love you Not and uh, yeah. continued success. And uh, thank sure. you. Thank you very much. And a uh, 55 gasser with a Cadillac engine. Now that's way cool. Because that's what they did back in the day. Cubic inches, man. Cubic inches were king. V gas. 55. Now, that is a big block in a Corvette with an Edelbrock cross ram. Wow. I don't know what to say about it. Other than it is cool all day long. Don't get much cooler than that. I can't even describe this one, folks. <laughs> that is wicked cool. And it's probably way too much motor for a car like this to have for any reasonable person. But uh, who says we have to be reasonable? It's a Nash, I believe. Hold on. And the parachute for more whoa power. A little 61 Corvette. This is 302, that would be the Z28 motor. High winding little Chevy small block. And the crazy cat. So, other than the V8 Vegas, you have here a V8 Monza 2 plus 2. And uh, this one. Nice little hot rod. Some dual quads on the tunnel ramp. Big meats, wheelie bars, cool ride, social distancing 2020, yep, keep your distance, cool little hot rod. Another uh, Chevy Biscayne with a big block in it. Falcon convertible. Cadillac four door family cruise car. The Galaxy. 427 in it. Let's see what it says. Yeah, it's a C code. Pontiac Catalina. A 66 Dodge Dart. Gotta give that some love. A little bit fancier than the 64 I got at home. 70 Chevelle. <laughs> 56 Chevy. It's like a 32 three window. Ford Model A. Chevy truck. 57 Thunderbird. 40 
Chevy Ford. Chevy Coupe. Ford Coupe. Ooh. Laid back and laid down. And flames. That's cool. I'm told to look at this one. Big meats on the back of it. Tucked up in there. Pretty black and copper paint. Interior nicely done. Check this out. Oh my god. That is big time motor. <laughs> It's that time I'm getting into the shadows here, folks. But uh, little six uh, GT350 Shelby. Pretty cool. Fire extinguisher, roll bar in the back. Shelby wheels, side exhaust, pretty cool. All right, folks, we're here with uh, Tommy, and he's going to tell us about this uh, Chevy Coupe. It's just a 53? Four. Four, okay. Kind of similar cars, right? 53 yeah. and four? 53 and 54, almost the same. Okay. This came out of San Diego, California. Okay. It was built in 09. It used to be brown with a white top. Okay. Sandblasted the floorboards and rocket panels. They're original. All right. Yeah. Um, it came with a six-cylinder back stock. Right, right. Now it's got a 350 air condition. Power brakes, I see that. Yeah, power brakes, tinted windows. All the comforts of home. Yes. Comfort of home. Now, yeah. <laughs> now I'll show you the comfort of home. Okay. Come on over here and I'll show you. You're going to have to do it, Bob. Come over here. Push your hand down that seat and feel how comfortable that it is. Ooh. That's like my brand new super deluxe mattress. Yeah. That's awesome. And where do you see doors that shut like this? Wow. And all the glass is double. The tent is in between two pieces of glass. Okay. Sandwich. Front windshield and back window, same thing. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. So you, it was painted here after you bought it? Or? No, no. Oh. This was all done out in San Diego, California oh, in 2009. Okay. Oh, oh. The I guy see. I got it from in 2017, he bought it out there. I see. And shipped it home. Okay. I bought it in Lee, Mass. Oh, that's a good ride from here. Yep. There you go. Yep. Well, thanks, Tommy. I appreciate you taking the time. All and, right. Uh, fun cruise night car in a car show car and i uh my thing is i go to car shows and i talk to people about their cars and i've right. uh i'm just starting i'm new kind of a rookie still at it and yeah. uh, i'm having a blast so thanks for taking the time tommy Have very nice night. meeting you Got a little bit of a pair going on here four headlights retractable roof and that's cool and then a little bit custom, but a station wagon. Wow, wagons are cool. And uh, the hatch that opens, cruising. Let's go cruising. All right, folks, that's a wrap here for uh, Berlin, Connecticut. It's a uh, quick Monday night car show cruise night at the uh, Berlin Fairgrounds. Enjoyed it. Uh, saw a lot of cool cars, met a lot of nice people uh, with some really good stories. So uh, had a good night. I'm uh, sorry if I didn't uh, show your car, if I didn't meet you. Uh, I understand there's another all day show, big one coming up here and I'm gonna do my best to come back to it. So uh, say hi if you see me, flag me down, say uh, yo, come talk to me about my car. Uh, 
Thanks for watching, folks. Again, click the like, thumbs up for me, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's not a paid subscription. There's no there's no purchase required, folks. It's just a thing to tell YouTube that you like the channel and uh, you want to see more of it. Uh, help the channel grow. I'm a rookie at this. I'm learning uh, new stuff every day. So uh, I'm going to get out there and see some more cars and meet some more people and tell some stories because the stories are and the history are it's really what it's all about for me. So uh, enjoy your cars. Get out there and cruise them and uh, have a fun time. And remember, Let's go car cruising.